Court. If you've never seen the Night Court episodes that our next guest is on, put them on your watch list and you're welcome. He just about stole the show in Independence Day. He's played his own father and brother on Next Generation. Welcome, Lieutenant Commander Data himself, Brent Spiner! Sunday morning. Yeah. Yeah. We have gathered here today. <laughs> this is a church, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, this is a great theater. I love this. Wow, when was this built? A long time ago. Excellent answer, Bob. Thank you. 24. Oh, it's a gem, isn't it? Uh, you know, Bob asked me as I was coming in, did I want a, a moderator, or did I not? And I, I, we determined that I was going to have a moderator because I, I always like to have somebody to make fun of. <laughs> I'm your guy, man. I'm here for you. Good. Perfect. Um, they didn't even turn on my mic, so... Oh, that's even better. Yeah. Uh, if you have questions for Bob, just give them to me. <laughs> I, um... Did you guys get wet? Uh, yeah. That uh, was pouring. It's not pouring now, but... Uh, Welcome to Florida. That's Florida. <laughs> it's, it's Florida and Alabama. Yes. <laughs> it's L.A. <laughs> it's all places. So what is interesting is that, 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 and this is no offense if there are... are what are they called? Uh, meteorologists in the audience, uh, or you know, any anybody who uh, deals with the weather. But that's the one thing that you never got right. I mean, <laughs> what is that? You know, uh, you would think by now they could tell you what the weather's going to be, but as it happened, um, how good of you to come out this morning? Uh, you got up early. You uh, exercise. <laughs> <laughs> Drink mimosas. Drink mimosas. Had a couple Bloody Marys. <laughs> mimosas made your way over here. Right. Staggered in. Right, right. <laughs> um, gosh, I love this place. Eh? And, okay, so, uh, uh, yes, sir. did you have anything you wanted to say? <laughs> I, I have many things, but you know, I. I, I I have no Star Trek questions. I figured they had all the those. Well, that's a good thing because I was going to say, I want you, you to feel free to ask me anything, uh, anything at all, uh, except anything about Star Trek or my personal life. <laughs> <laughs> but anything else. Uh, <laughs> favorite book. Okay, so, oh, I see. They're going to line up. Uh, just this side, right? Uh, there should be a mic over there, too. Is there a mic over there? They're fine for you. Uh, oh, I see there's a man standing in front of it now. Okay. <laughs> I, I, see. I just think of my first line here was, I love Bob Wheeler. Oh, well, thank you. I, I love Bob Wheeler, too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, they're doing all these revivals now of television shows. They've got uh, Charles in Charge is on, and uh, they're bringing back... Um, uh, uh, what's the Tom Selleck show you was on? Maggie yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. well, Who wasn't on that guy? Man, man, man. Yeah, but they've got Matt. They've got MacGyver, they've got Mag and P.I., they've got, uh, Fuller House, uh, OI50. We could do this all day. Uh, Will and Grace, you know, and, and, uh, so I've seen, wouldn't it be great if they brought Night Court back? Yeah. well now, because Night Court was so surreal, uh, it was just a bizarre, but I would love to do that character again. Uh, I'd like for another 10 years. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for work. <laughs> well, exactly, that's what actors do. <laughs> Not all actors, but, uh, but me. <laughs> <laughs> so we don't like to talk to some of these people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sure. Yeah. Let's uh, let's 
a waste of time. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Mike. Hi, uh, Hi Mike. I'm projecting because this is all. Um, the, um, it's not, actually. Is it? No. no because I need to blow it. <laughs> <laughs> you no, you're good. We can use it. Okay, you played it, variations on your character as, as Data. If they had walked up to you with the first script talking instead of lore, they had said, you'll be playing Lorraine. Yes. How would that have gone for you? <laughs> well, uh, that would have been fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I, I did play a woman once on the show. Yeah. Yes. You know. uh, and uh, what happened was they, um, when I played uh, Dr. Sung, Data's quote unquote father, his creator, uh, they uh, originally had cast an actor by the name of Key Luke. Uh, you remember Key Luke? Wonderful actor. It was on, um, uh, what was that David Carradine? Uh, Kung Fu. Uh, he was the master on Kung Fu. And he was also the number one son in the Charlie Chan movies. Terrific actor. And he had been cast. And, and then I got the script. I didn't know at that point. When I got the script and read it, I didn't know they'd already cast Key Luke. But, uh, I read the script and uh, I thought, well, shouldn't I play this part? I mean, wouldn't it be great if uh, if I played the uh, the man who created Data because he it, it have all kinds of other implications. He he would have created him in his own image and, and all of that kind of stuff. And so he would be both his his creator, his God, his father, everything. And they agreed with me and. Um, Poor Key was out of work. How <laughs> <laughs> many times people have done that to me? <laughs> anyway, I think they paid him, but um, they didn't pay me, but they paid him. Uh, seriously, I got paid one salary, and I played three characters. <laughs> but um, but uh, and then uh, there was a character of uh, well, there was there was Lore, who was his brother. There was Doctor Sun, who was his father. Uh, and then a woman came on, um, Fanola Flanagan played, who was basically his mother, sort of. And, and I, of course, read that script and said, shouldn't I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> But it turned out that she was a, an android as well, and so it didn't really make sense. Uh, but uh, when I got to play Dr. Soong, <laughs> once they gave me the part, I thought, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do this? Why didn't I say that? I should have. Does anyone have Key Luke's number? <laughs> I, I really thought this is ridiculous. I can't play this part, and um, I really didn't I know how I was going to do it. So I, I panicked really. Uh, but Michael Westmore, who did my makeup, uh, Michael is a genius. He really is, and I think. Uh, uh, certainly, aside from the writers and some of the actors, all. Michael is the unsung hero of, of the entire Star Trek uh, production that, that was done at Paramount Pictures when I was there in, in Deep Space and Voyager and Enterprise. Michael did all of the makeups, uh, all of the, the prosthetics, and he did my makeup every day. He, he's a brilliant, brilliant makeup artist. And uh, so he did a, the, the Dr. Sung makeup. And I, uh, he, he said, we need to put it on you the day before just to see what it looks like if I have to make any adjustments. So he put it on me, and uh, I looked in the mirror, and I thought, oh, I, I can do this. Uh, because I thought, you put anybody in this makeup, they can do it. Uh, you could have put Milton Berle in that makeup. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic as Dr. But, uh But playing a woman, uh, I, I did do it the one time on the... Uh, uh, the uh, Western episode, uh, Fistful of Davis, I played the barmaid. Mm -hmm. Very, very attractive as a woman. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you've seen it, but in ways even better than as a man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, how about over here? Hi, Mr. Spine. Uh, I was curious, as an actor, is there a difference in how you prepare for a role where you have absolutely zero emotion? as opposed to one where you're either halfway psychotic or crazy and have to display a ton of emotion? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's very different. Uh, because, you know, I don't have, you don't have to do all that emotional work and try to figure out where am I going to draw this from, you know? I mean, it was a whole other set of problems. 
Really, I, I kind of think of acting as, as a set of, of problems that need to be solved. And uh, sometimes you solve them and sometimes you don't. It's, it's such, acting is such an ephemeral thing. I mean, you, 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 you hope you're gonna nail it, you hope you're gonna get the part and, and you're gonna figure it out. And sometimes you do and sometimes you don't. I mean, fortunately, I always have, but uh, <laughs> no, not really. I mean, there have been times I've been bad because I just couldn't find the, the character. But yeah, the preparation's really different. For data, mainly the preparation was, uh, how do I remember this stuff? Because um, it was like memorizing a phone book, really. And we would have, we worked 16 hour days. Uh, I'd go home at night, you know, wash off data, which took about uh, an hour and a half to get off completely. And uh, look at the script and my stomach would turn over. I would think, how am I going to learn this? And, and uh, I always had a, a rule I made for myself, which was uh, that, that I couldn't go to sleep unless I could do it all the way through perfectly, at least one time, so I would know the next day I, I could do it. We had a lot of guest stars who uh, would be on the set, then they just couldn't get it out of their mouths. And, and they'd have to bring in cards, and they'd say, gosh, I knew it last night. But there was a trick to it, that dialogue in particular. You had to say it out loud, because he was saying words you'd never said before. And it was, uh, you know, your, your mouth was having to learn to move around those words. And uh, so I, I, the, the, one of the real tricks of that was saying it out loud. I mean, Mr. Thorne could never, ever do it. Uh, <laughs> he, you're filming this, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> he will hurt me if he sees it. <laughs> but please don't post this anywhere, okay? <laughs> never. Never would I ever post this. Later. Well, let me finish. He is just one of the most wonderful, <laughs> wonderful actors and people. He is actually godlike. <laughs> <laughs> And, and, and I'm saying this in the church. Uh, right, right. <laughs> uh, anyway, yes. So thank you. That's the second time I've asked that question. This answer was much better. Oh. Security. Wait a minute. The second time you've asked it of me? Yes. When did you ask it of me before? Uh, my first con. In uh, Megacon in Orlando. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I would recognize him. He looks so different. Huh? There's a five-way answer. You were very funny that day, though. <laughs> 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 it hooked me on doing this. Oh, yeah. Well, clearly, and, and it hooked you on asking the same question. <laughs> 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 You know, if I see you in line again at another time, <laughs> uh, I have a feeling I know what you're going to ask me. <laughs> I may just prepare something and hand it to you. <laughs> Over here. Hi. First of all, thank you very much for being part of some of my favorite memories of a kid. Uh, my whole family piled up on the bed watching. Is, out of all the sets that you've been on, even with your plays, what was the most fun that you ever had on a set? Well, the most fun I ever had on a set, uh, well, it, we had a lot of fun on Star Trek. We really did. It was, uh, I mean, Patrick said once uh, he, that he didn't expect he would ever have another job where he would laugh all day long, <laughs> because that's what we did. We laughed all day long. And, um, but it was a different kind of fun I had on, uh, I did a movie called Out to Sea with Jack Lemmon and Walter Matthau. And uh, yeah. that was like really dying and going to heaven. It was, it, it was a dream come true. I couldn't believe it because when I was a kid, I mean, both of those guys were like, he, Jack Lemmon was my hero. And, uh, to be working on a, on a set with them, and, and it was amazing. They were great too, absolutely wonderful. Both of them became really 
friends, good friends, really good friends with Walter. Jack and I lived in the same neighborhood. We used to see each other walking our dogs, and uh, it was fantastic. Yeah. Hello. Um, how did Spot fare after the show? <laughs> I would have expected it of him, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have no idea what happened to Spot. I mean, uh, you know, I, I can only surmise. Uh, it's been uh, probably, you know, it's been a long time. How many years since we did the show? Uh, it was twenty something years, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you well, we're not in the 90s. We made it in the 90s. You guys are good movies into the uh, <laughs> next century. But um, uh, Spot, uh, you know, there was more than one Spot. You know, oh, of course. Was, uh, there was two. <laughs> <laughs> Well, after all these years, you need to know the truth. <laughs> Spot was uh, That's a charlatan. <laughs> that wasn't really Spot. No, actually, they had three cats uh, through the years. Uh, the first cat, I don't know what happened to it. But uh, <laughs> the second cats. two cats who were both played Spot were uh, uh, called Brandy and Monster. And, wow. uh, seriously. And uh, they were both lovely cats, really sweet. Uh, two of the worst actors I've ever, ever seen. I mean, they made Dorn look. Oh, no, I'm not going to. Uh, oh, God, yes. They are a wonderful character. We're like this. We really are. Uh, but yeah, I don't know what happened to Spot. Uh, I'll look that up. Maybe if you Google it. <laughs> Just Google Spot. And, and uh, I think the first thing that comes up is... Uh, what is it? <laughs> I don't know Hey. Um, according to YouTube, uh, you apparently do a pretty mean Captain in the car. Oh! oh. 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 Captain Hepburn? <laughs> 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 no. Oh, carry on. Uh, <laughs> hey there. How are you this morning? Good, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. So, my question is kind of um, how you want to roll with it, but uh, so when you play your character on the show, you play a lot of emotion without showing emotion. If you must. If you must. <laughs> so, is there anything that you learned about human emotions or about like the way we are as people doing your character? Like, is anything like inspired you, like you know, like a aha moment type thing? Like, uh, would have never known like humans could be this bad good, you know? <laughs> I, I think the question is, uh, did, did I learn anything? Uh, <laughs> like I said, how you gonna roll with it? Yeah. But this is the way I'm going to roll with it. Uh, <laughs> did I learn anything about emotion, about human emotion, from playing Data? Is yeah, that right? Yeah, but human emotion, like, you know, just something that, just because how your character was, and about that, I mean, you had to pick something up, you know, like, you just never knew before, and you just had to learn it, basically, because, I mean, you're so great at showing no emotion, but having us feel that emotion. Exactly. <laughs> 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 That's what I learned. I learned that I was so great at. Uh, well, you know what? I, I don't know. I, I never really, uh, never really thought about it. I, I, I mean, uh, the most important thing I think I learned. Um, 
was that, uh, and, and I didn't learn this until years later. Uh, I didn't learn it while I was doing it, fortunately. Not really. Uh, I, I've been told about it, but I didn't really understand it. But um, I had, uh, just doing conventions, I learned this, that, that I've had a lot of uh, young people come up to my, my table, and uh, people in their 20s or early 30s, and say, uh, I had, I have Asperger's, or uh, you know, and when I was when I was a, a small kid watching television, the only character I could relate to was Data, and uh, and that was a really powerful thing to find out. I I I had heard it briefly from, of all people, Dr. Oliver Sacks, who knocked on my trailer door one day and um, said, "Can I come in and talk to you?" And, and he did, and he said, "You know, you're." You're sort of the poster boy for kids with autism, and, and uh, I didn't know what he was talking about, really. And and but I've learned subsequently what he meant, and uh, that's it, it. Really, is kind of overwhelming, and and I thought I'm, I'm kind of glad I didn't really know it at the time, because I think I would have pushed the writers to address it more, and I probably would have blown the whole thing. And. Uh, just having the awareness would have, would have kind of destroyed it. But it's one of the most rewarding things to me about having done the show is that like, to find out that, it, that the character had an impact on kids who had, had a, a need, needed somebody to relate to. Yeah. That's cool. Hey there. Hi. <laughs> Are they still in Oz, or is it just uh... <laughs> They didn't come to me. <laughs> you know, I turned a page and it said, Data has a cat. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, I felt fine about it. I, I, I wouldn't exactly call myself a cat person, but I'm not a not cat person. Um, I'm an all animals person. I love all animals. Uh, so much so, I, I don't want to eat them. And uh, seriously, I, I don't eat animals anymore. And, uh, I um, admittedly will eat a fish still, but I don't feel good about that. I, I think that's on its last legs too, but uh, if I can find a fish with that legs, uh, uh, I'll have to remember that one. Uh, uh, you'll ask me that question. Uh, but, um, but I have a dog. And I've had dogs for years and years. I've had uh, many dogs. Uh, and I love dogs. I think they're the greatest of all creatures. Yeah. I think you have a creature over here. Hey, no, okay. over there. Hi. Hey. hey. So I'm not going to ask you a data question. Okay. <laughs> um, I want to ask you about outcasts. Yeah. I'm a really big fan of the show Outcast. Yeah. And I was just wondering, because I grew up with Lewis Data, and you're completely different. Yes. <laughs> you're very creepy. <laughs> <laughs> you're more like me, right? Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> um, so I guess it came natural to you then? Yeah, very much so. <laughs> <laughs> um, have you guys filmed season two yet? Or yeah, season two. Can you give us any teasers about season two? Yeah. I'll give you a teaser. <laughs> this is me in season two. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'll tell you what. Uh, season two we shot over a year ago. And uh, the show, I don't know if you saw it, it was a show on Cinemax called Outcast. 
Uh, it's uh, based on a comic book uh, of Robert Kirkman's, who is Walking Dead as well. And uh, so Cinemax aired the first season, did nothing in America. I mean, it was like one of the lowest rated shows in America. Not so much because of the show, but the, I don't think that many people had Cinemax. And um, in the rest of the world, it was not on Cinemax. It was on HBO in Canada. It was on Fox everywhere else in the world. And it was a hugely popular show around the world, except for America. And so they canceled it. Uh, Cinemax did. Really? Yeah. Before they showed the second season. And somehow, I don't know why or how this occurred, but uh, I have read that they are now, uh, in July of this year, going to start the show from the beginning and show both seasons and then put it on uh, HBO Go and HBO Now. Yeah. So, oh, yeah. yeah. So we will see. It. Now, whether they can keep doing the show after that, I don't know because nobody's in the contract anymore. And, uh, and one of the one of the, the lead actors on the show, one of the central characters, um, uh, Reggie Cafe, who was uh, played the sheriff. He was on uh, House of Cards. He won an Emmy for House of Cards playing Freddy the Barbecue Guy. Uh, passed away about a month ago. Oh, no. And uh, just a wonderful, wonderful man and a great actor. And it was just a tragedy. But. But nobody's under contract anymore for the show, so I don't know how they could keep going. But at least you get to see the second season, which I think is way better than the first season. Well, I'm very excited about that. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for asking. <coughs> hey. Hello. Hello. Um, so I was curious about some of the creative influences behind Dreamland. Oh, well. Uh, She's referring to uh, my CD. I have two CDs. One of them is called Little Yellow Eyes Back, which is okay. And um, and then my second one is called Dreamland, which uh, she just referred to, which is a whole different animal because it's uh, it's it's basically it's a show. We thought of it as a movie of the mind, and it's um, there's dialogue and there's music and. I don't sing by myself. I, I, I do sometimes on it, but I sing with uh, a singer named Maud Maggart, who is just a brilliant singer, and uh, she's um, just one of the greatest singers ever. And uh, it's this journey through this dream uh, this guy is taking, and he meets a girl, and on and on and on. And uh, there are other male characters in it, all of whom are voiced by Mark Hamill. Um, you might know him from, uh... <laughs> 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 Batman. Uh, he was in uh, The Joker. He's The Joker uh, on the animated Batman shows, most of them. Um, <laughs> the Flash. He's The Flash. <laughs> he's, he's what? He's the trickster on Flash. Uh, on Flash. Flash, the TV show? Yeah. How was he on? Is he good? <laughs> Mark is a fantastic actor. He really is. He did, he did all the other characters on my CD, Dreamland. And he, uh, when he came in, he said, I've known him for a long time, and I, it was a favor, and he said, yeah, I'll do it. He came in, and he said, all right, look, he, I think he does like five characters on it, something like that. He said, uh, I'm going to give you three choices on each character. And they were all entirely different. And he said, just tell me which one you want. And I'd go, A, B, or C. I'll take C on that one, and B on this one. And, and he, he was great. But uh, it's a lot of, I don't know what the influence is. It's like a, uh, it's like a, it's just a noir movie, musical, nightmare dream that this guy was having. And, uh, it really, I, I feel really good about how it came out. Um, I was, uh, I, there are very few things in my life that, that, I, that I really feel good, I mean, things I've worked on that I feel really good about what, what we did, but I did, I did feel good about Dreamland. Thank you, and I really enjoyed that one. Thank you. <laughs> Your baby? Yes, what can I do for you? <laughs> Don't just stand up. <laughs> Talk to me. Um, my favorite character on Next Generation is Data, and I was uh, wondering what your favorite book is. 
What, my favorite what? Book. My favorite book. Oh, look how cute you are. <laughs> are you a cat? You what? I'm dressed up as Timmy from Undertale. Oh, yeah. But what? Dressed up as Timmy? Does anybody? Good. It's a video game. It's a what? Video game. It's a video game. <laughs> Yeah, I've played it many times. Uh, I love that game. Um, you do look really good in your outfit up there. You should wear that all the time. <laughs> Never take it off. Um, is your mom in Starfleet? Yeah. My mom is just up that as Dr. Crusher? Yeah. yeah. I'd know her anywhere. <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, what's my favorite book? Yeah, what's your favorite book? Mm, I don't like any books. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Um, you know what, I don't have a favorite book because I, I really have read a lot of books. And uh, I, I, my favorite book is usually the one I'm reading right now. What's your favorite book? My favorite book is The Wizard of Oz. Yeah, that's a good book. That's a good book. We have one of those people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's good to Thank that. you for your question. That was really good. That's Thank awesome. you. <laughs> Look how cute she is. Skipping up the end. There she is. Flying <laughs> over. Be careful. Okay. <laughs> she made it. Good. All right. <laughs> Hey, hello. Uh, first, I think that your rendition of Is Anyone There is a definitive one. Uh, so okay, thank when, you. When Michael Jordan came here, he uh, spoke extensively of his experience in uh, fighter jets. I uh, know. Uh, and then uh, my question is... Did, did, does he have extensive experience in fighter jets? You know, he, he, now he thinks he was on a starship, too. <laughs> Could you talk a little bit about the experience working on uh, Sunday in the Park with George? Sunday in the Park with George. Uh, red, 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 red. Okay. Uh, Sunday in the Park with George was uh, an awesome experience. It was, um, uh, I got to meet Stephen Sondheim, you know. I got to work for Stephen Sondheim. Woo! <laughs> you know. Genius of the musical theater. I mean, there's, uh, there'll never be anyone like Sondheim. And, uh, it was a fantastic experience. I had a, a, you know, I, I I didn't do the show that long. Um, I have to tell you what, I, I did it for, I did the workshop off Broadway. And um, there's all kinds of stories about that. You know, we did it, uh, we only had a first act for a long time off Broadway, but that's what we did. And, uh, but the cast was pretty much what went to Broadway with the exception of uh, if you know the show, there's a soldier who turns around a cardboard version of himself, who he calls a little brother. And um, off Broadway, that part was played by Kelsey Grammer. And um, for some reason, Kelsey and the, the powers that be on that show did not get along. And we, when we went to Broadway with the show, which was like six months later, we were invited to go to Broadway. Kelsey was the only one from the, the original production that was not invited to go to Broadway. The week that we started rehearsing on Broadway, they flew Kelsey to California to audition for the part of Frasier on Cheers. And had he been in the show, there would never, probably never have been a, a series called Frasier because he would have been a minor character on Cheers that was brought on for to be Lilith's husband or whatever, or, or no, it was, he was brought on to, uh, he was going to marry Shelley Wong, I think, and, uh, uh, and it may never have evolved into Frasier, the Frasier that we know and love. So things happen like they're supposed to, I guess. But uh, I only did the show for four months because, I don't know, I was, I was young and I was trying to build a career and I just didn't think sitting in a show for a year or so was a great idea. 
So I would generally take a shorter contract and I would open a show and then I would leave and try to get another show and try to build a, a body of work. And, um, and so I, I left after four months on Broadway and uh, I went to California uh, and I did a couple of things, uh, television guest shots uh, in California and then they called me and they said, oh, oh no, then I went, I got a call to go back to New York to do Big River. Uh, I would play Big River is a Broadway musical by Roger Miller that's uh, uh, about Huckleberry Finn. It's, it's based on Huckleberry Finn. And um, it won the Tony that year. It was a huge hit. And I was asked to replace an actor who was leaving the show, and that was Rene Aubergeois. And, oh, wow. Uh, so I replaced Rene in Big River. And while I was doing Big River, Sunday in the Park of George was still running, and it ran for uh, a year, and then they were going to close, and they decided to film it for PBS. So they asked me, do you want to come do the, uh, the television production? Because we'd like to have the original cast in the television production. And I said, yeah. So, um, at night I was doing Big River. During the day we were running, uh, you know, we were filming pieces of, of Sunday in the Park of George. And uh, one day they decided, look, we're going to run the show, the whole show, from beginning to end, just like a production. And um, we're going to have an audience, a full audience. And so we had that kind of feel in the, in the TV production of, of, that we're doing in front of a live audience. And can you do a whole show? And I said, yeah as long as I'm out by a certain time so I can make the curtain of the Big River that night. And so we did, and I, I had the, the privilege of being in two Broadway shows in one night, uh, one day. I did Sunday in the Park with George Matinee, and then I did uh, Big River in the evening. It was exciting. That's yeah. awesome. Yes. Oh, he's a children's girl, a cat. Video game, isn't it? <laughs> um, I was wondering if you've ever noticed uh, whether or not like, children, especially with autism, or adults too, relate especially to the character Data, because he spends so much time throughout the series um, trying to be able to access interpersonal relationships and learning about what humor is and how do we know what's funny. Yeah. Came in late, didn't you? Because <laughs> I, I, I actually told that uh, the whole thing about uh, about that. Yeah. I missed it. <laughs> you were punching your child while. He didn't ask that question. No, I. Uh, uh, yeah, I, but yes, indeed, and, and that's what I was telling everyone that that I had. Yeah, that uh, I got that knowledge years later doing conventions from kids who had grown up and came up and told me. Yeah. I love that. Well, <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> it's the joke just the joke. It's the joke. I can see that. All right. So I had a question that's similar to, I guess, a, a previous <coughs> question, but it, I think it's remarkable how many different personalities you've played on, specifically on Next Generation alone, though, um, of course, your other characters in, say, like Independence Day, I think, was, uh, were really cool, but I want to know, with how many personalities you played, not just as Lore or as Dr. Soon, but also as personalities in the holodeck and other characters throughout the series that were extremely, uh, I guess, diverse, in personality, I was wondering what are the difficulties of doing something like that, or and, and what is your your thought on just how diverse of a char of characters you played throughout the series? Well, I never counted them. Uh, perhaps you could do that for me. <laughs> Send me a text. Let me know. <laughs> Next time uh, someone asks me that question, I'll be able to say thirty-seven. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know, that was the great thing about playing Data. Really, I mean, one of them joys of playing data was that uh, it, we first started, we had a director on it, I think it was like the third episode ever, and uh, he said to me, we all had uh, seven-year contracts, 
we didn't think we would be there for seven years, but uh, we didn't think we'd be there for two years. But um, he said, you know, if this thing runs seven years, you are going to be miserable. He said, your, your role is so small, I mean, so narrow, such a narrow, uh, I said, well, it's a, it's a small palette, but I'm trying to paint every corner of it, if possible. And uh, he said, yeah, I think you're just gonna regret this so much that you're, you're locked into having to play this one character. And, and I said, I don't think so. I don't think it's gonna happen. Uh, and to my delight, they kept throwing things to data to experiment with different humanity, different aspects of humanity and different characters. And then there was the holodeck that allowed us to play all kinds of things. So no, that was a joy that I got to play really this, this great range of characters. So we got the five minute warning, so I think we have time for one more. All right. Hello. I'm gonna take five minutes to answer you. <laughs> I don't think it's gonna take that long. Okay. Um, this might be a silly question, but do you still remember the words to a British tar? No. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't either. So. This. I remember this. Uh, Felis Cadis is the taxonomic nomenclature of an endothermic quadruped carnivorous by nature. I'm not going to do it. No, I, <laughs> I, I, and I remember this. I don't remember the British tar, uh, but I remember life forms. You could tell me. That's easy enough. Thank you. What do you want? Do you want to do one? Do one? Okay. Yeah. One quick one. Um, what is your favorite side character that you've played? Where you weren't like the main character, but you had really fun playing that role. Well, uh... What was the question? What was my, my favorite one? Your favorite side character. Oh, you side character. You weren't the main character, but you had fun playing that role. Well, I, I definitely in Penn State. The first in Penn State, uh, was... Uh, I really thought, when I saw the, the way the script read, uh, he was just a regular doctor in the script. And uh, my agents were really pushing me. They said, this movie's going to do something, I think. And I, I don't know, it's just the space, the weird things are blowing up. What's the big deal? And, but I saw that, and they want you to read for the doctor. And I went, oh, it's so boring. And I went, okay, all right. And I read it, and somehow it hit me. Inspiration rarely hits me. But it hit me, what if this guy was a doctor who uh, had gone to Berkeley in the 60s, <laughs> taken a lot of acid, and, uh, this is who he is now. And uh, so I added one word, in, in the audition scene was the first scene where I met the president. And uh, when I did the scene, I added one word that changed everything. I said, Mr. President, wow. And that, <laughs> and that got me job. And, and that set the tone for the character. And then I went to, uh, I said to the producers, can I have long hair for this? And they picked up the phone and ordered the wig to be made. <laughs> and, uh, but I thought with that character, you know, sometimes uh, in, in the short run, you can do things that you just couldn't keep up for an entire you know, large role. Uh, but I, I, so I thought, yeah, I can do this in the short. I can play this character that's like out there and, you know. But lo and behold, then they make a second movie 20 years later and they bring me back and mm -hmm. I'm in the movie a lot. And it becomes, <laughs> and I found out you can play that character for a long time. <laughs> I'm going to do it a third time. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I don't have any real information for it, but, but I think it, it's going to happen in the next couple years. Yeah. Thank you all so much. You want to say something, Bob? I'm just saying. Great father. Let me just say one thing. I, I, I just want to say one last thing. That was it. <laughs> no, no, I, I, you know what, I'm looking at this theater and I, I mentioned to Bob, I have this show that I do that's a, kind of a one-man show with a band and, and uh, I sing and tell stories and stuff. And I'm looking at this place and I'm going, this would be a perfect 
Yeah. 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 Yeah.